Don. Bite his nuts off. He's like new people. Anyway, as you can see, we got a special guest. Uh, Mr. Reese Millen just got back from Pikes Peak and he was nice enough to bring his race car here. So yeah, today on Daily Transmissions, we've got a very special guest, Reese Miller. First things first, let's just get to it. How was Pikes Peak? It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had a, a, a great week and a, and a great run on race day. This old girl was retired in 2013 and we dusted it off about four weeks ago. Put a new turbocharger on it, went through the fuel system, uh, did a compression check and all the numbers that were on the valve cover matched yeah. nice. from five years ago. So, very nice. Uh, fired it up the hill and thrashed on, thrashed on some Porsches. So uh, where'd you end up finishing for the, the weekend? Uh, we set a new qualifying record for the Time Attack 1 division. This is, uh, believe it or not, this is the one and only Genesis, the car that did everything. Pikes Peak, Redline Time Attack, Formula, Formula, the, drift, yeah. Formula drift stuff. Um, and uh, it's still just a monster. You, so it's you, unreal. You built the dream race car, essentially, because you just did all those races. You retired it for years, brought it back to life with no issues. You just you got yourself a monster here, huh? Yeah, it's um, you know this is a 4.1 liter BC stroked um, Lambda Hyundai V6 from the original 3.8 liter. Right. Uh, single turbo by Garrett, um, about 18 pounds of boost, but it makes around 750 torque and 750 power to the wheels. Wow. Uh, and when you're up in an environment like Pikes Peak with altitude and everything, you need a, a big compression chamber. The... And that 4.1 liters is a is a big help. So we broke the qualifying record. Uh, first in time attack division, fourth overall against some unreal cars, so it was a great week. That, that sounds awesome. What, what was the time on the qualifying record? Uh, time on qualifying was a 3.59. To go below four in a, a production car is, is just ridiculously yeah, quick. Yeah, uh, we built. You got those, those can, weapons right there. Yeah. You uh, know, they get it done, shiny, huh? Shiny shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the right one in particular can, is, is pretty heavy. Can we see, the, uh, see that 4.1? Yeah, let's have a look. Don't mind Joey, he's just getting it ready for the beauties, you know. Joey don't play around when it comes to set design. Got to get those reflection shots. Yeah, you know. So this is it as we ran it in Formula Drift. Um, no one really believed the numbers that we produced back in the day right. then. And, and they're still very stout numbers for today's competition cars. But this is the Hyundai Lambda 3.8 stroked again to 4.1. Uh, we use the stock valves, um, stock heads. Uh, it's a sleeved, dry sleeve block uh, with a, the BC um, stroker kit, but all the accessories are all production based. Right, right, and that's, uh, that's insane, man. It's a healthy sized turbo, just a single turbo. It made it very efficient to work on, and, and with the displacement, it just, it just made tons of torque. It's, right. That torque number at 750 is at 3600 RPM and holds it to 72. Wow, so, so that's a broad um, range. Yeah, just she's <laughs> very drivable. You can watch the in-car footage from Pikes oh, this year. Will Rogie, uh, check out Will Rogie's video. You, 
can just see when that thing comes on torque, I'm just short shifting it. Right. The tires were maybe a little soft for the day, it was really warm. Yeah. Uh, and even more so short shifting on the top section, but we missed our own record by a second. Wow. Uh, but enough to win the class this year. What's that like chasing your own record around? You know, that mountain is mysterious. You, you only get one chance a year to, to put it all on the line. Right. Um, 12.42 miles, 156 corners, and you've got to get them all right. And you've got to predict what the mountain is like, not only six miles up the run, but 12 up miles up the run, and then what the weather pattern is going to do. You can't read the surface of the road to determine how much grip is there, so it's a maximum effort just to push everything on race day. Right. Um, and, and obviously a bit of a guessing game at the start to, to get the balance right on tire compounds, on temperatures, and, and the setup of the car. Yeah, I, uh, Pike's Peak is more than I can comprehend. You guys are amazing for even challenging that mountain and, and driving it the way that you do. Um, super impressive. I mean, shit, man. It's, it's <laughs> awesome, to, awesome to see you. One, yeah, it's been a long nice. time. Yeah. So what's next then? You know, we've, um, we kind of explored rallycross uh, for a number of years after stepping out of Formula Drift in 2012. Right. Um, had success there winning with Hyundai in the, the turbocharged Veloster. Yeah. Um, and the last two years we've been randomly playing in the off-road world. Uh, we won Baja 1000 last year. Wow. And looking at the, the Polaris UTV product um, and built out a whole range of product, we built race chassis and all of that. Eager to get manufacturer support and get back into Rallycross or, or something again. Right, right. Um, but for now, we're just having fun building movie cars, doing a lot of filming each week for TV commercials and feature films as I have done for years. And, yeah. And just, just having fun. A lot of stunt driving, huh? Yeah. Um, Primarily so, the Pennzoil stuff lately. Yeah, actually. yeah. Oh, the Viper, so, so, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah I saw a, that. We have been all around the world with Pennzoil. Um, we've done their Joyride campaign, which started some three years ago in South Africa with the Hellcat. Right. Um, we went to uh, to Baja with a supercharged long travel Jeep JK. Went to um, Kananaskis Mountains above Calgary in Canada, yeah. and did the BMW M6 twin turbo V8 through the snow yeah. on the frozen lakes. Yeah. You've been we went around. to Barcelona in a Ferrari 488. Uh, more recently, this year we went to Miami with the Viper ACR. Yeah. Yeah. Need a little little help because that car is just a weapon. Yeah, you were throwing that thing so, around really crazy. So cut to all the footage from all the <laughs> all the videos you just saw because this dude rips. Um, and then we just did a, another one that I, I can't give the title or what the car okay. was three weeks ago. And then we're heading off to uh, Germany to possibly a well-known track to do another piece here in about three weeks. Well, it sounds like you're staying busy, man. Yeah. Thank you for taking time out of that busy schedule yeah, to come here. Well, it's from dope, one man. FC lover to another. Yeah, you know? I, I appreciate Respect that. For the yeah, rotary. yeah, yeah. No, thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually going back to a rotary right now. I, I did, I did the V8 thing for a little bit, yep. but I figured I got a little bored, so we'll I've see how that. Got a few in the stable. Yeah, I'm yep. gonna have to hit you up and get a little tips. You know, I yep. got, got you, Justin, friends from all over who, who have little, little uh, rotary tricks. So I'm gonna hit you up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you had to say, what is your, what was your favorite race in this car? Because obviously it's got a ton of history, so. You know, we won uh, twice in Las Vegas with this car. Um, we nearly won the championship in 2012. It was up against Daigo and myself at right. uh, Irwindale. Yeah. We actually had to beat him to win and got a little suckered in behind him and tapped the wall and we ended up third for the championship that year. That was a rowdy uh, year. But, but overall, I actually think it was this year. Uh, you know, not having driven the car for five years, kind of having to relearn its, its quirks and what it needed to go quick, uh, and running the car faster than we ever have. Obviously, the setup on race day was not perfect, but on qualifying, we ran five or six seconds faster than the car ever had. Uh, and on race day, we were actually running four seconds quicker than that. Wow. So it was... That's amazing. Well, watch the video. I was pretty excited at the end. Will's my 
my roommate and he told me he yep. made it and I've been meaning to slide it into my playlist. So I'm gonna check that out right after we're done with this. And inside is all business yeah, as I can see. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do that. I love me some big wings. Gotta have that for Pikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, um, this is as the car ran again for Formula Drift. Um, we have a composite division of the company. So not only do we build our own race cars, um, that we build customer cars, we build movie cars. And that's all and RMR? That's all RMR, um, or RMR. No. And um, <laughs> through that we have a composite division, so we build carbon wings and Kevlar parts and, and fiberglass parts that are street performance parts and accessories, right. typically based around motorsport programs that we have had, but we also private label for companies building trophy truck bodies and, right. and all sorts of stuff that we've done for Hot Wheels and yeah. so forth. So, yeah, you know, clad with carbon, you've got to have it. Um, hey, we even built some parts for Chris Fosberg. You may have heard of him. Yeah. Um, another hand cooked driver. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is the car. It has a uh, Hollinger uh, V8 supercar transmission. That looks um, fancy. So, it's a sequential with a, a gear cut, which we were running uh, a variation of a sequential back in the day, and we just kept twisting the shaft with right. how much torque this car makes. Uh, so we ended up going up to this unit, which is their biggest unit. Kind of standard now, we have a Winters Quick Change rear end. Yeah, that's um, very standard these days. Back in the day, 2009, that was kind of innovating the levels. And we were actually one of the first in 2005 to wow. put a hydraulic handbrake in a car with a secondary set of calipers. Ah, uh, you started uh, a trend? Yeah, yeah. Fun, fun fact for you. <laughs> 2004, first Formula Drift event at Atlanta. I did not qualify. Dang, I that hurts. Raced a car sideways for so many years, never pulled a handbrake above first or second gear, because in a rally car you, you never do it. Mm -mm. Um, so didn't quite understand that that was a criteria, and uh, didn't qualify. Came to the next event, figured out what we had to do, and by the third event we had developed a secondary set of calipers with a hydraulic handbrake mm -hmm. carried over from the rally, and that has kind of become the standard now. Two events later, we, we won. That's awesome. So you came up quick. Yep. You figured it out. You, you you got it sorted out and started a trend with two two rear brakes and all that jazz. I love. Obviously, it's not on here now because this is Pike's Peak mode. Pike's Peak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I love the fun facts though. If you uh, if you want Reese to go on a beer with to learn all of his fun facts, comment below. Shit, I don't even know what else to get into on this thing. This HRE wheels, big old hand cooks. Yeah, this is a, a this is the uh, hand cook racing from like their Euro European GT racing series, their uh, F two hundred series tire, um, and then we got them to make a kind of a special blend of their compounds that they have, right? Uh, specifically for Pikes Peak because you are dealing with a a climate range that is so different. Road surfaces in the morning that are thirty degrees. Uh, ambient temperatures that are you know below 20 sort of thing so you need a tire that works in a, a big wide range, range. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a huge tire on the back it nearly measures 28 inches tall wow it's a 327 10 18 and then on the front is a 270 680 uh, 18 so it's a big tire on front as well that's more tire than I can handle that's for sure and honestly I mean you, you came to the donut garage with your awesome <laughs> race car and I wish I had a handbrake. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, you know what we're gonna ask you to do, and yes. you came on slicks, racing the slicks. stickiest tires gummy, you could find. Slicks. So basically, you got one shot. I got a bias yeah. power. I can wind all the brake to the front. <laughs> all right, that Let's works. Have some fun. Yeah, no, let's do it. You want to see burnouts? Do you want to see burnouts? How far are you gonna see burnouts? Yeah. What are you gonna give the people? Did I don't you say? Know. Did I hear fifth gear burnouts? Is that what I? I don't know. Has it got five gears? Uh, uh, you tell me, it's your car. <laughs> I, I only used five last week, so let's see what we've got. The gravel's still, look at that. Like you just, the road used to be amazing. Do you like, do you like taking you gravel with you so you can brag to people when you show them your car? Yeah, it's, it's like, oh yeah, no mind, I was just at Pikes Peak, no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right, so that's enough fun and games. It's time for burnouts. Reese Millen, Pikes Peak legend, uh, whole bunch of horsepower, big tires, cool car. Let's party. That thing wants to eat. If you wanted to get it to sit longer, we could throw some water down. Um, or... Yeah, I just wanted, I was trying to shit. Oh, okay. Shit. Okay, so you just gotta. So All right.
Just falling off his car. Hey, Pike's Peak, you left something. Yeah. That's so. Those tires are too big. Some water. All right. We don't try to do water burnouts, but this is a special case. You see those tires, they're massive and sticky. Deal with it. I'm just explaining to the people that water is okay in this situation because of those big old tires you got, you know? Yeah, um, I guess we built some grip into this cab. Oh, did I realize? <laughs> and that's what he wants anyway. That's why he's fast. So we're the scumbags making him do scumbag things. Don't be light. Throw it all out there because he's going to shift gears so it'll creep forward. As he's, you know, ready? Rich man shit. 